Good morning. Just had a visitor here at my shop, so I'm a couple seconds late. Uh, but today we're going to look at Mark 15, 1 through 25. And this is the, the trial of Jesus. And it begins with, as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation. And with the elders and the scribes and the whole council, the whole Sanhedrin, this is the whole ruling council of the Jewish religion that were based in, in Jerusalem. Uh, a, a pretty prominent group of people um, within the church anyway. And at this council, I mean, they were trying to figure out what to do with Jesus. You know, he was, he was a trouble, troublemaker for them. It says they bound him and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. And you think about that, they bound Jesus. I mean, when they had come, you know, it was the people from the council the, that had these, that came and arrested Jesus. And he, you know, he, he didn't put up any fuss, any stink. He didn't try to run away um, when they arrested him. And he hadn't, you know, he had, I mean, he, he just wasn't a troublemaker, but they bound him. They tied him up and, and led him away to Pilate. And I, you know, probably partly as a way to show Pilate that, you know, this man was a bad man. You know, you don't tie somebody up that's, you know, that doesn't need to be tied up. And you know, Pilate doesn't know and really for sure what's going on. And, you know, they, they tell him a few things. They, they don't, Mark doesn't tell us that, but... You know, they hand him over to Pilate, and Pilate asked, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus' response, You say so. And, um, you know, that was what Jesus responded. And then the chief priests accused Jesus of many things, and, and Pilate said, Have you no answer? I mean, because Jesus just listened. He didn't put up a, a defense. He didn't, you know, he didn't tell them, you know, that they were crazy, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't try any more to convince them. I mean, he had done everything he should have had to done to convince them, the chief priests and the elders, that, that he was indeed the Messiah. Uh, verse 5 says, but Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was puzzled. You know, and I mean, you think about that. I mean, somebody goes to court and they're in front of a judge even if they don't have a lawyer of their own, I mean, they're going to speak on their own behalf. They're going to say something. But, but here's Pilate. You know, he's the, he's the big kahuna. He's the chief man in charge. And they bring all these charges against Jesus. And again, I'm sure that, you know, just as before, you know, they were, they were conflicting, although they had probably tried to get their story somewhat straight. But Jesus didn't respond, and that puzzled Pilate. I mean, he was just... You know, he, he knew there was something afoot. You know, he, he understood that. And, um, you know, and then we do go into this section where it talks about as, as was Pilate's custom during the festival, he would release a prisoner. And he was hoping that he could release Jesus, you know. And, you know, and he, you know, it, um, you know it, hoping that he could, he could let this innocent man go. But the crowd, stirred up by the chief priests, cried out for Barabbas to be released. And, you know, the Bible tells us Barabbas was in jail for you know, being a part of the insurrection in which there were mur you know, murder had taken place. At least one murder had taken place. And, you know, so the insurrection was something that people of Mark's day were familiar with, but, but we don't have any real record of what that insurrection was. But... The people came and, and cried out for Barabbas. You know, Pilate asked him, do you want me to release for you this Jesus, the king of the Jews? And verse 10, Mark writes, for he, Pilate, realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests handed him over. And how often does that happen in our world, that out of jealousy, you know, somebody says something false about somebody, or out of jealousy that you go behind their back and you, you do some backstabbing, or... Uh, you know, jealousy has some ugly fangs, and and this is, you know, the Pilate realized that there was jealousy, that these chief priests, that these religious leaders were seeing in Jesus somebody that the people were clamoring for, and the, the chief priests, you know, stirred the people up. You know, they, they went around out of their own jealousy that way, and just, you know, they reared its ugly head, and and we see that so much in 
I remember the you know, the cliques in school and stuff. You know, if you're in the in crowd, you're fine, and if you're not, you know, um, the and if you came with a nice shirt or something that was new, I mean, you wouldn't get compliments. You'd get snide remarks because of the jealousies all the time. It's just terrible, just jealousy, what it does. But anyway, the chief priests had stirred people up. They cried out for Barabbas to be released. So Pilate released him, and then he said, well, what do you want me to do with Jesus? You know, and, you know, put him in, I mean, put him in prison, you know what, you know, but no, they cried out for Jesus to be crucified. Why? Because that was what the chief priests, that's what the religious leaders had incited the crowd to do. You know, the, the religious leaders wanted to get rid of him. They were seeking ways to kill him, and this was how they could do it. They got the crowd riled up um, and fired up, and they call it out for Jesus to be crucified. And uh, so Pilate, Pilate went along with the crowd. I mean, that's, he did, you know, it's kind of like, well, I did it because everybody's doing it, you know, or everybody's, you know, and, you know, just because everybody else is doing it doesn't really mean that you should do it all the time. But, but Pilate, you know, went along with the crowd. And turned him over to the soldiers to be crucified. The soldiers led him out into the parade grounds of the palace, you know, the general courtyard there. And it says they called together the whole cohort, 450, 480 soldiers in a cohort. And so here there's, you know, 480 of them there. And they put this purple robe on Jesus and they mock him and they salute him. And you know, when you salute somebody, what is it? It's a sign of respect. When we hear the national anthem as a sign of respect for our, not just for the flag, but for our country, we place our hand over our hearts. We, you know, we, we salute people and things that we respect, that are deserving of our respect. But, you know, they're saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews was in mockery because the Romans had no idea about the Jewish faith. The, the, to the Romans, the Jews were just peons, peasants, people that they had to keep in control. You know, they were, they were the rabble rousers, the Jews were. And so for the Roman soldiers to salute Jesus, it wasn't at all like it would be if they were saluting Pilate. It was done out of mocking and scorn and to belittle him that way. Kind of, you know, the jealousy rearing its ugly head again. And um, it says that they struck his head with a reed, they spit on him, they knelt down in homage to him. You know, the wise men came to pay homage to Jesus as a baby, as an infant. But these soldiers, they weren't, they weren't paying him respect. They were, they were mocking. And then it says they took the purple cloak off, put his own clothes back on him, and then they led him out to crucify him. And on the way, um, they compelled, that means they made, they ordered a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, to carry Jesus' cross. And Simon of Cyrene was a free man. He was a Roman citizen. The, the, the soldiers didn't know all these things because of his appearance. Um, but what they did, what the soldiers ordered Simon of Cyrene to do um, was against what they should do to a Roman citizen. I mean, a Roman citizen should never have been ordered to do that. It was against the law. I mean, he could have taken him to court on it, you know, but instead, Simon of Cyrene was a follower of Jesus. And, it, and Mark tells us that, you know, this Simon of Cyrene, it says the father of Alexander and Rufus. And we don't know who Alexander and Rufus are, but the people that read this early book that Mark wrote, this early gospel, knew who Alexander and Rufus were. They knew that Simon of Cyrene was a follower of Jesus, and I'm sure that they knew then that also Alexander and Rufus were. These men's names meant something to the people that Mark would have written this book to, the people that would read it and, and hear what he had to say. So uh, Simon of Cyrene, Alexander, and Rufus, you know, had, had a place in the early church that, that people knew who they were, recognized their names, and would, would respect them to, you know, to a certain extent. But also, also uh, having named the, him that way, Simon of Cyrene, the, the Jewish people would realize you know, the, 
the injustice that had been done to Simon of Cyrene in that as well. And not, I mean, and not to lessen the injustice done to Jesus by any means, but um, when they compelled Simon of Cyrene to do, to do that, they were breaking their own Roman law in many ways. And when they got out to the place of the skull, to Golgotha, they offered Jesus wine mixed with myrrh, which was a sedative, something to take away the pain, something to um, ease the hanging on the cross. I mean, that, that, that was a horrible way to die. I'm not going to get into that today at all. But um, it says they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what different, you know, each person should take. And verse 25 we end with today says it was nine o'clock in the morning about this time of the day. You know, my, my watch said nine zero zero when I started this. So it was about this time of the day that Jesus was crucified. He hung, he hung on the cross. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna leave it there for today that Jesus, Jesus is on the cross and um, he's there because of you and me so that we may know that we are set free from our sins that God loves us and that we live in God's grace each day.